All right, it's good to see you all here at Anchor Baptist Church this evening. We're going to get started with 112. You got a hymnal. Number 112, Blessed Redeemer. Stand and we'll sing number 112. Good to see you all here at Anchor Baptist Church this evening. We're going to get started with Blessed Redeemer. This morning, um, Jared, will you uh, open us up in prayer, please? Mm. Amen. Um, I'm, this is an unusual prayer request, but uh, there's a guy, and he's in Michigan right now, and he's probably going about 200 miles an hour. His name is Matt De Benedetto. He's a NASCAR driver. He's a friend of my son's. And about three or four weeks ago, he accepted Jesus Christ and on national television gave a testimony. And he doesn't have a ride for next year. He's running up, running pretty good. Just prayed he maybe has a good finish this morning, this, today, like first. But <laughs> the rest of them are the second place through 36th place losers. Amen. Well, um, I tell this tell this little testimony. I sold my airplane back in March, and I and every every month I'd get a postcard in the plane and the mail says, "We've got a buyer for your airplane." And I, and I called him, and every one of them was a wholesaler. And I called this guy in Texas. His name is Charlie Miller for Mular Air. And I said, "Charlie Miller, why should I talk to you about selling my airplane?" And he's got every rating there. Is he's a jet pilot? A, a 
certified flight instructor and everything else. And he said, well, I probably have 20 people that would buy your plane right now. He says, I need a buyer's agreement, and seller's agreement, and I'll have your, uh, an offer with an earnest money deposit uh, in, in a day or so. I faxed him the order, and about an hour later, he faxed me back a buyer who bought my airplane for more money than I ever thought I'd get for it. And after everything was done, he sent me a thank you note and his business card. And his business card says, if you miss knowing me, you've missed nothing. If you miss knowing what I do, you may have missed a little bit. He says, but if you miss my Savior, you've missed everything. I called him up, I thanked him, and I said, that's why I never had a hiccup in this whole deal, because it was, it was just a great way of doing business. I wish every businessman was like that. But anyway, think of uh, Matt De Benedetto, And um, I don't have anything to... Uh, Ed, but did you get your plate, your cup full this morning? Okay, we got a whole week of this stuff. I was up uh, Friday night and he beat my brains out, and he only spoke for 20 minutes. So, but uh, don't forget, this is a, a sponsored deal. If um, we will take care of our speaker and everybody else, we've got a family coming tomorrow, and the name again is. Do said, I thought it was duets. There was four of them. That couldn't have been right. So, but anyway, uh, you will uh, you will miss something because they're good. I mean, uh, you know, if you read Chronicles, it tells you if you got a talent, that's what you're supposed to do in church. You know, if if you're good at cleaning toilets, that's what you're supposed to do. If you're good at singing, that's what you're supposed to do. If you're good at building things, that's what you're supposed to do. The guy who wrote that, pretty smart fellow, called God. Just a thought, not a sermon. Anyway, I'm done unless somebody's got something else. Glad to see you all back. I made some of the best I've done so far. It was but reminded me of you. <laughs> anyway, uh, Brother Ron, why don't you uh, pray for the meat and pray for the offering and uh, pray for the, the preacher to No, 125, Jesus paid it all. 125. I hear the Savior say, I strengthen you. Yeah.
seven. What a gathering. I was told one time that on a Sunday night you have to sing one that's a little bit more upbeat. Otherwise, the 4 p.m. cloud starts to fade on you. I got sat down and told that one Sunday. 157, what a gathering. All right. Somebody hand him here, will you? <laughs> but Danny Hall was a great friend of mine, and him and Miss Dee Dee sang this song around the country, and uh, I like it. Amen. It's not your norm. It's an old country hillbilly song. Amen. And it's uh, people that used to study the Bible, they called them scholars back in the day. 
Amen. And I know some scholars. I really do. I know there's people in this room that study the Word of God. Amen. So this is, I'm a little scholar. I am a little scholar. I daily go to school to learn of Master Jesus and his perfect holy rule. The scholars, they all love him. He is so kind and free. Come all you careless sinners and go to school with me. Y'all help me out here a little bit now. I am a little Christian. The Lord hath made it so. All over a new creature, what wonders can he do? I love the things I hated. I hate the things I loved. My master is preparing me to reign with him above. I am a little preacher. I'll preach the gospel true. Whatever the master gives me, I'll give it all to you. I am a little soldier. Enlisted in this war, I fought in a few battles, hope to fight in a few more. And when this life is ended, I'll lay this body down. I'll fly away to Jesus and wear a starry crown. <laughs> Amen. I figured y'all need some culture. Amen. John chapter 15. I have probably, no doubt, preached this here before. But I figure on a Sunday afternoon like this, what, a, what better message to preach again? Amen. I'm over that. If you get over it, we'll all be fine. Amen. But this, uh, I believe, this will help Anchor Baptist Church, and it'll help anybody saved in here individually. It'll help you. Amen. John chapter 15, look at verse number 8. This is, uh, if you've got a red letter edition, these are red letters. Amen, this is the Lord Jesus talking. This ain't, this ain't my opinion. It's not my preference. This is Bible. About as pure as you can get. The Bible says, Herein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. You don't hear much on fruit bearing nowadays. We're trying to just get people to church, let alone bear fruit. <laughs> Amen. I mean, if you're a no count and out of the will of God, pretty good chance you ain't bearing much fruit. And I know this, it's the Lord's desire for us to bear fruit. Amen. I want to see somebody else get saved. I want to see somebody else get encouraged. Amen. And no more fight to go on. Amen. Then the Bible says, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. They call me Dr. Love, so I got every right to preach on this. If ye keep my commandments. Now that's a big, that's a big if. There's some great ifs in the Bible. That if is a great word in our English language. Amen. I don't know in English what you would call that. I know... Uh, we tried to learn English in school, dangling participles and all that. I didn't get much of that. But if is a great word. It's a two-letter word, but man alive. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. You see that? Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Now, folks, everybody in here, I don't care who you are, I don't care what kind of opinion you got in life, your joy means something to you. 
You do what makes you happy. Amen. I mean, I do what I like to do. I like to hunt and fish. So I do it. I like to be in church. I'm in church almost every day of my life. I'm ate up with it. I'm rent. Amen. People do what they love to do. It's getting your love right. Amen. I love the things I hated. I hate the things I used to love. Are y'all with me? In verse number 12, this is the message, but we're going to read on a little more. This is my commandment. Now, is this the Lord Jesus talking? This is his commandment, okay? This ain't mine. That you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. Has Jesus Christ loved you? Let me ask you again. Some of you didn't answer. Does Jesus Christ love you? If he does, and you know that, there's an obligation there. Amen. So you know what now? You're obligated? If you know Jesus loved you, you're supposed to love each other like he loved you. That's pretty good, ain't it? I'm going to wax an elephant here. Amen. <laughs> Verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I, that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit, fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. In verse 17, here he says it again. These things I command you, that you love one another. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And Lord, we love you because you first loved us. And God, I thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for rescuing me and my family. And I thank you for being able to be here at Anchor Baptist Church and amongst my friends. And Lord, these folks, I love them. And Lord, I know that's a work that you've done in my heart. And Lord, help this church, these folks, to love one another. And God, work on our hearts. Revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I'm going to preach for a few minutes tonight on this, the forgotten commandment. Amen. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Amen. And then the Lord's commandment, you know what he says? That you love one another. <laughs> Amen. That's the forgotten commandment. I'm going to tell you folks, listen, you cannot have a church split if the folks in here love each other. Amen. You, don't, you won't want to miss church if you love the folks that are in here and the people in here love you. Amen. Now, folks, I don't know what you call love or you think love is, but love, is, I'm telling you, it's something different than just an acquaintance. A lot of people, just church folks, are just acquaintances. Amen. I stay with the Hansons. Y'all pray for me. Amen. Miss Chris, she, I love her. She's one of my favorite people in life. Amen. And I'll, I'll guarantee you this. She loves me. Is that right? Now, Brother Jim, we just kind of put up with him. Amen. But no, I love my brother. But uh, listen, it's not, a chore for, it's not a chore for me. Amen. God did that work in my heart. Amen. Uh, this little gal, your little spitfire of a gal here, I'll put her on the spot again. Amen. She come in here. I, I come in this morning, and she's just bubbling all over. And I've already said in my heart, I said, man, I love that little gal. Amen. You say, what is that? That's outgoing. That's, amen. If you all had that, man, what kind of church would you have? Amen. She said, well, that'd be kind of sickening. Everybody would be bubbling all over everybody. Well, that'd be a lot better than... The, the, the latter part, 
Amen. Come in with a chip on your shoulder and draw a line of sand. Amen. The forgotten commandment. You can't, you can't improve on this. Jesus Christ said and commanded that we love one another. Well, you're hard to love, Brother Mark. Well, I'm not a member here. Amen. But if I was, I would compel you to love me. Amen. Say, what do you mean? I, you could ask any church member that I'm a member of, right, Liberty Baptist Church, and every one of them would tell you, Brother Mark loves me and I love him. Amen. That, that takes a work. That takes a little effort on your part. Man, I love those, I love those awkward moments like that. That no, I know now I'm shooting in the right hole. Amen. And this forgotten commandment, I'm going to tell you something, folks. You can't improve upon it. This thing has been exploited. God's people are easily exploited. Amen. Brother Bob, he, it's easy to get something over on him. You know why? Because he loves you. Amen. And he'll go the second and third and fourth mile with people. You say, well, I, he shouldn't do that. Well, it's hard not to when you love folks. Amen. He shouldn't let them come back. Well, what would you do, shoot them down? Thank God for God's people. Thank God for a preacher that loves you. Amen, Brother Mark. Good preaching. This commandment has been neglected. I'll guarantee you the average church I go to knows nothing of this. Amen. If I love somebody, I'll fight for them. Amen. And it'll break your heart if you ain't here. This love has been twisted. It's been abused. It's mocked at. Amen. This kind of love ends gossip. It's hard for me to talk about and gossip about people that I, that I love. But people that I don't love, <laughs> amen. Da, 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 da. Amen. This produces real people. It produces reliability. This love that I'm talking about, love for the brethren, produces great people. Amen. Brother Hank Scoggins, you all know Brother Hank as a great man. And he was a great man. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, is <laughs> wasn't his ability with the scriptures and stuff like that. If you knew Hank, you knew that he loved you. If you'd known him any amount of time, you knew that he loved you. Man, what an asset in life. What a, what a thing in life to have that. Amen. So this forgotten commandment, folks, I'm, I'm going to tell you, how can you improve on it? You can't. So let me say, number one, this loving one another, that tells me I'm his. There's no way in the world that I would love you other than that Jesus Christ moved inside here because I couldn't stand Christians. Here's a little song I'll sing you. This, uh, I heard a guy sing this, and man, I said, man, that is my song. Amen. This is one of them today. You ever heard this? How I came to love these pilgrims is to me a great surprise. And the way the Lord has led me is a wonder in my eyes. I never thought I'd be one, but I'm happy now to say that although I used to hate you, I'm one of you today. Now I know the world despised them. So I said, twill never do. I'd lose my reputation if I joined this noisy crew. But then I heard my Savior calling. You must surely go their way. Now it's settled, hallelujah. I am one of you all today. I got rent. Now I'm glad that I have joined them. For they led me in the right and I'm going to stay among them, ever walking in the light. Then someday I'll join their number, 
over on the other shore. It's settled, hallelujah. I'm a pilgrim evermore. Now I feel constrained to tell it because I love this narrow way. It's settled, hallelujah. I'm one of you all today. <laughs> Amen. I never thought I'd be in church. I never thought I'd be a preacher. Amen, an evangelist. Amen. But God has put me amongst the best people on the face of the earth. God's people are the best. He said, well, I go to church, but I have a problem with God's people. No, you got a problem with God. Amen. And people say, well, you know, I'd love the ministry, but people wasn't involved. Well, that is the ministry, you nut. <laughs> you coconut. Amen. And look in, just look in here. Look at the different people that are here. There's smart people here. Not many, but there is. There's people affluent. There's people that have been around the world and everything else. Then there's dumb Maryland, Virginia hillbillies sitting here. And they hardly got sense enough to come out of the rain. <laughs> Amen. There's all different types. But I'm going to tell you, if we're all saved by the blood, washed in the blood, going to heaven when we die, we can love one another. Amen. I'm his and he is mine. And the reason I love God's people, I know it's because he lives inside of me. Amen. It don't bother me a bit to say I love you. Amen. I told Brother Struble, I want, I want to see his daddy. Say, why? I want to hug his neck. I love him. Big galoot. I don't know if he's watching this or not. You better show up, big boy. Say, why? I love you. Amen. All them guys we started out with, the guys we went to Bible school with. Man alive. Some of them got out. Some of them got out of the way, got out of church. Amen. Man, we love them. God's people are the best. You know that? Amen. They built this church. I remember. There's people sweat blood to build this place. Amen. Least you can do is show up. Amen. And man, God's people, you got a nice building, pews, air conditioning. In this part of the country, what a testimony. Amen. And man, while you're here, I, I, we was at a meeting, Brother Mike Honstein. You all never met Brother Honstein, but Brother Honstein was Miss Sue Spurgeon's husband. He died of Lou Gehrig's disease. And Miss Sue and him, man, I'm, Miss Sue is one of the greatest ladies I've ever met in my life. Her husband was probably the, one of the greatest Christians I've ever known in my life. He got shot with an AK-47 round in Vietnam and was paralyzed from the waist down. And that guy was not only a Bible scholar, but that guy loved Christians. He loved God's people. He loved me. I remember we went to a meeting together, and, and he was there, and they honored the veterans that day. And they took his wheelchair, and they put it on the platform and honored veterans. I'm telling you, if you'd have cut me that day out of blood red, white, and blue. And he got us all together, all of us preachers, and that Lou Gehrig's disease was taking him. And we all got in a line, and he wanted to say something to all of us. We all got up there to his wheelchair. I, I knelt down there, and he grabbed, he grabbed his hand like that, and he pulled me down there close, and he kissed me on the cheek. And he goes, I love you, boy. Man, I'm telling you. And he preached that morning. And some of y'all heard me do this before, but I'm going to do it again. I've probably done it several times here. He preached, and he put a box of Kleenexes on his lap in that wheelchair. And he grabbed him Kleenexes and cried, and that Lou Gehrig's disease, he couldn't hardly understand. You had to listen real close. And he pulled that wheelchair around there and had them Kleenexes. He says, I am going to preach to you message from death's door. Man, I'm telling you, we was all sitting there. He says, I'm going to die. He said, the things that I thought were special in life, I found out now they wasn't real special. He said, the things I now count dear are the things that last. And he said, he, he drawed three men out of the congregation. Two of them was around my age, and one was an older guy, Brother Bob. 
Amen. And he asked those three men the same question. He looked at those men, he wheeled his wheelchair around, he says, do you have any neighbors that love you? The first guy about my age, he goes, no. I mean, what about you? Second guy goes, no. And the third guy is an old guy, kind of like Brother Hank. And that guy went, I think I've got one. I think I've got one. And old Brother Mike, he says, I want you to look at your church folks. They love you. Man, I'm telling you, the light came on. Folks, there's nowhere in life that'll love you like God's people will. Nowhere. Amen. Some of you can go to a family reunion and not even feel loved. A McGahee family reunion, if you go and there's not two or three fist fights, you ain't been to a reunion. Amen. God's people are the best. Amen. Knows I'm his. I'll tell you what else. It's the greatest thing I can give. If I was a rich man and I'm not, amen, I could give you money. I could give you all kind of gifts. But I'm going to tell you, the greatest thing I can give you is I can love you. That's the greatest ability man has. I say this. I say it's the greatest attribute that man has. God put in us an ability to love one another and to love God. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, that's the best you got. Amen. Again, I will refer to our young couple here that is beginning ready to go into holy matrimony. Amen. Son, the best thing you can give her is to love her. And she love you. Amen. You can make it through a lot of things with that. Amen. And if you think that love has gone wrong, y'all ever had that in your life? You ever had anybody turn on you? You ever had a husband or a wife look at you and say, I hate you? I'll tell you what, you'll lose your health. You parents that have children, you ever had one of your children look at you and go, I hate you? Not want to be around you? It'll devastate you. Do you know how powerful love is? Amen. Does this make any sense at all? This is a commandment that Jesus Christ gave us, that you love one another. Amen. I believe it's the greatest gift that you can give anybody, greatest attribute. Amen. I remember going and seeing Dr. Ruckman, and he was uh, just a little tiny old man then. And I made an effort to go down there and see him, and I walked down the hallway to his office, and he was coming out, and he had his books and stuff, you know, he... He's coming out, and he sees me, and he goes, Ryan, what are you doing here, man? I said, I come to see you. <laughs> he said, why? I said, I just want to tell you I love you. And thank you again for what you, all you did for me, Doc. And he hugged me, put his arms around me, and goes, all right, man, I love you too, boy. <laughs> Amen. Now, I don't know what you count dear in life, folks. But I'm going to tell you, if you're just kind of skylarking through this life and you don't have people that love you and you don't love anybody, you are a sad package. Amen. And if you ain't regular in church and you ain't got a church family, you say, well, I'll tell you, I have problems with some. Well, why don't you get it right? Why don't you get it fixed? Amen. You be the exception to the rule. Amen. You make a difference around here. Amen. You can love people. You can get them out of your weird little world you're in. And you can love folks. Uh, kids like me. I don't know why. Adults hate me. <laughs> kids like me for some weird reason. I was sitting on the platform not too long ago, and I preached. And I'm sitting there, and there's a little girl ran up. I don't know. She's about four or five years old. She ran up on the platform and jumped in my lap. And I looked out, and her mom was standing there going, 
She said, did you ask her to come up there? I said, no, ma'am. She said, she come up there on her own? Yes, ma'am. She said, she has never done that. And she's hanging on my lap, got her head on my, on my chest there and everything. Amen. You say, why is that? I don't know. How do you, somebody asked me one time, says, how do, you, how do you help young folks? I'll tell you how you love them. Kids are experts. They don't look smart. But they are. Believe it or not, they are. And I'm going to tell you what they're experts at. They're experts of telling you who really cares and who don't. Amen. If you don't care, if you're a preacher and you don't care about them, here's what they hear. Blah, 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 blah. Or like Charlie Brown's teacher. <laughs> Amen. You ought to see it from up here. Amen. It's the greatest thing I can give. I'll tell you what else. This loving one another is the glue that holds the church together. You want to have revival? How are you going to have revival if some of y'all got ought against each other? How are you going to have revival? I got in a little church one time in Altoona, Pennsylvania. I always say Altoona. Man, if Oliver B. Green said the Holy Ghost, don't even go by Altoona. The Catholic Church in Altoona is on 13th Street and 13th Avenue. The Munsters live there. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and that town, man, you talk about hard. Man, you could pull into it and feel the oppression. And I was in a little church there, and I'd been going to that church for about eight or nine years, and they hadn't had one new member. And I come one year, and the preacher said, Brother Mark, we're in a mess. I said, I know you all are. He said, what's wrong? I said, I don't know. He said, well, tonight, just let her fly, brother. All, all holds, no holds barred. <laughs> and I preached something along this lines. And I said, if you're sitting here and you got ought against somebody in here, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And during the invitation, there was a lady who got up on this side of the church and walked over, got another lady, and they went to the altar. And I went, uh-oh, you better watch out. You better, you better buckle up. I was still standing in the pulpit giving the invitation. That was about 8.20. By 11.30, I was still standing giving the invitation. You ain't going to believe this. That was on a Wednesday night. Thursday and Friday, we had visitors come, and we had seven people saved that were outside visitors in that church. You know what God was waiting? He's waiting for you to get right. How about in here? There's folks all over this county around here that need God. Well, let me ask you something. If you all got awed against one another, you don't even love one another, why would God send anybody in here? Does that make sense? <laughs> Amen. It's the glue that holds everything together. You say, well, you don't know what I know about them. Who cares? We're all idiots. You do know that, don't you? We all got problems, right? Do you not know that? Amen. Be careful when you start pointing out everybody else's problems. Amen. Love hideth a multitude of what? <laughs> I rest my case. We all in here. Amen. I mean, if you put us all under the microscope, put you sitting out here in the front and have a panel of us, amen, examining you with the Word of God, how much do you pray? How much Bible have you read in the last year? You ever said a cuss word in the last six months? If you do, what do you say? What movies you watch? What music you listen to? What music do you put on your radio when nobody else is around? Huh, man? Huh? How would we all stand up to that kind of scrutiny? Amen. You're going to cast stones? You're going to tear apart the people you're supposed to love? Amen. You want to tear apart your marriage? 
You can do it. Amen. You ladies can do it. You can criticize your husband in front of people. You guys can take your wife and, amen, criticize her in front of other folks. You want to you destroy her? You want to break her heart? You can do that. You can do it very easily. You want to do that to your church family? You do the same thing. Amen. Do you know what it does to a church when you don't show up? Breaks your heart. Amen. Listen, folks, we're in this thing for the long haul. Amen. Till the Lord comes back, we're to occupy. Get in church. Get back in. Amen. You say, what do I do? I'll tell you what you do. Let these people love you and you love them. It'll work. Guarantee you it will. Amen, amen. But we're so different. It don't matter. Amen, I love you. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I'm going to do now is it's, it's 449. I'm going to wind up and I'm going to throw the ball in your court. <laughs> this is your church, your revival meeting. You're here. Heads bowed and eyes closed. If you got something against somebody in here, or if there's somebody you just need to go to and tell them you love them, I would do that. I would do that. I wouldn't wait. If there's something you need to get fixed, the invitation's yours. This is yours. If there's something in your life, something going on, get it fixed. Some of y'all, I'm going to tell you, there's outside of the local church, there's nothing. There's no substitute for this. There's no substitute for God's people. You've got to have it. How do you teach kids how to love each other and how to love their parents, how to love God? Church. We're supposed to be examples. Amen. So here tonight, would you respond to the commandment given to, by our Savior? This, these things I command you that you love one another. Father, I ask you to bless, bless this invitation. God, have your way. And Lord, please do a work here at Anchor Baptist Church. Every home represented, God, I pray you'll work in every heart. God, help us here tonight, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, girl. been a member of this church for about 20 years. And I remember when we were in the storefront, I first met you folks. And, and then we went to the bar. And then we came here. And then we had 140, 160 people on a regular basis. And then something happened. It's like somebody threw a bomb in here. I got caught up in a lot of stuff, and I'm sorry. I'm not an easy guy to, to get along with. I think I'm an easy guy to get along with. I just don't hang around stupid a lot. I'm sorry, but I just say what's on my mind. I shouldn't say that. So I'm sure I've offended some people in this church. And if I have, I'm sorry. But Jim Hansen is trying to deal with frustration. Um... I heard a saying the other day, it's hard to roll up your sleeves when you're wringing your hands. There's a whole lot of hand wringing going on, and I, I, I might be guilty of it. 
but I'm never, I was never part of a church that I watched grow from infantism. I met Donnie and uh, Diane. They may not remember it, but the first church service I ever went to was at Blessed Hope, and it was a guy fresh out of PBI talking about Congress, Cadillacs, uh, credit cards, and some other thing that I participated in. Hmm? Yeah, and it took me 15 years to get my wife back in church. But I started out in that little first time I ever heard the gospel. And then I was in this big, fancy church, and 11, 1,200 people, it was deader than a hammer. And I left that church, and I went to a little storefront in White Plains. And I got fed, and I got fed, and then we moved to the bar, and we got fed, and the people started. I don't know if you've noticed or not, but you get some pretty good preachers come through here. I mean, if you're hungry, this is where you get the double-decker cheeseburger with all the fixings on it. And I, I've, I've grown up in this church. I, I didn't get saved till I was 40. And I have made a lot of mistakes, and I have said things, and that's, there's a proverb about that. I just don't read that page. I turn it. But if I've offended you, I'm sorry. And I don't want to sound arrogant or anything, but it's probably going to happen again. I do it in love or something, but I mean, I'm not trying to be offensive. But I don't want to see any more hand wringing. I'd like to see some roll up your sleeves and get in, get in neck deep. I've been beat up the last three days, and I got another four days to go through this. But if I've offended you, and I know I'm extremely capable, forgive me. That's all I got. Um. Apart from Jesus Christ, the person I love the most in life is my wife. And you know what? Um, whether you think so or not, every once in a while we might bump heads. Especially when Mark's around. Mark, you ever see someone that just tries to goat you into trouble? But there's one thing that we know about each other. We love each other. And in a family, I came from a family, my mom had 14 children, believe it or not, and four of them passed. Grew up with four brothers and five sisters. And we had our disagreements, but we always had each other's back. You know what the whole thing that drew it was? We loved one another. And when that Bible tells you something like that, the Lord emphasizes. I always think about it in the sense, everybody goes to John 3.16, I understand God's love. But what I couldn't understand is God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He looked at everything you were, he knew everything you would be, and he still loved you. He gave you a place of sonship, he gave you a promise of his home, an eternal life with him, that you'd be liking us on his him. I don't know of anybody honest before God that I have a problem with that I can't love them. Might not agree with everybody. Didn't, that's not about agreeing with everybody. But we can love each other. We can pray for each other. And you know what? I tell you something that's always bothered me. Um, Somebody's left and hadn't seen them in a while, and they come back. That bothers me when people don't open their arms and love them. Because you know what? I did that. And I did it for a long time. Miss Joan, you know that. I did it for a long time. And there was a man named Buddy Cargill come up to me one day, and he said, Bob, you know I love you. Buddy was in the room the day I got saved. Sister Joan was there the day I got saved. And he said, Bob, if you don't get right with God, he's going to kill you. You know that. And I said, buddy, he says, I'm telling you, buddy, I love you. Now, you'd have to know, buddy, he, the word love was not a free word with buddy. But I grew up with buddy. was in the gangs with buddy. Did 
drinks with Buddy. I never did much in drugs. But you know what? I knew constantly that he loved me. So when he opened his mouth, I knew it came from love. And the day he asked me, Bob, I, I want you to make me one promise, that you'll take care of my people and love them like I love them. I promise you he said that. And I fought coming up this way, I fought coming up this way, and one day riding down the road, I told Jim just the other day again, every time I come past this road and come by, took Andy over to see, remember the sea in the lot. And I said, God, paid sixty one or $2,000 for this piece of property. And every time I turned around and looked around, I heard Buddy say, take care of my people, Bob. Take care of my people. I want your promise. And I said, Lord, this land, he said, I want your church on this. Look, it isn't about all the people and stuff, but one thing we can do with each other, we can love each other. We might not understand each other all the time, but we can love each other. Hey, listen, God's not always pleased with you all the time, but he loves you. Mark and I have been friends since 1983. It's a lot of years. We've bumped heads a few times, but I love him and always have loved him. We lost a dear friend. I remembered sitting at a table with Mark, myself, and we were a trio, Ronnie Roberts. And... Uh, His wife is dying. Life's too short. I look around, Miss Janet, I hadn't seen her in years. And Mark said, Bob, I don't know what they're telling you, but she, she's horrible. It's horrible. I talked to Ronnie's brother-in-law, Brian, good man. And he said, Bob, she's not the same lady she was. Mark, she can't even hardly care. You can't understand what she's saying. Life's too short. Let's do something for God. How many people? It doesn't matter. None of that matters. Just God took 11 people and flipped the world upside down. Well, that was God. Yeah, well, you have God as your, as your Holy Spirit of God dwelling in you. He'll guide you, lead you, and direct you in everything. It's not about how many people you have. Believe it or not, we have quite a few. It's just every time we turn around, this corona stupid thing, put your mask on, take your mask off. This man says the mask ain't worth nothing. This man said it is. This man says this mis do the best you can to protect yourself. But here's the deal. Don't stop doing something for God. And this is a deterrent to keep God's people. And the longer you sit home and just watch something on the boob tube, uh, well, well, we'll catch you at church on this. I'm about ready to tell them to quit doing it. Because it's letting people sit home, prop up their feet, drink a cup of coffee. I did my duty. I don't know. What if the Lord had said, well, I did all that I could do for you. I'm done with you. It's crazy. But I love you. I love you so bad that it's, it hurts to watch. People, I led to the Lord. I got, I'll be, let you go. Got a call from Herbie Brown yesterday. riding up the road, and he said, Preacher, I'm back in, Preacher. I'm in Alabama, but I'm in. Preacher, thanks you for preaching to me in 1992. I bowed my head and got saved. Thank you, Preacher. I'm back in, Preacher. I said, Don't stop, Herbie. Keep going, buddy. Get back in. It's fun. Amen. It's a, 
I'd rather serve the Lord Jesus Christ than anything in life. You know what's sad to me? 78, how much longer can I go? But I want to keep going as long as God will let me. It's fun. I preached a message some time ago, and I'm done. On are you in? And the whole point was just basic. Are you in? Are you really in? Are you all the way in? Are you in? Do something for God. God jumped in the water and he said, I'm ankle deep in, for Jesus Christ in the water. And he says, that's not very far. It is when you go head first. Amen? You say, well, I go to this church. I don't care where you go. Do something for God. And let your light shine. Because other people are going to see that light in you. The hope of glory. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to be here tonight, to hear the message that you've commanded for us to hear. And that message is that I, I still can't figure out why you love me. I'm tired of trying to figure it out. I'm just grateful you do. Pray, Father God, tonight that you'll speak to hearts. And God, there are people sitting here right now that know people that are away from God. They know people that aren't saved. And God, for these next four or five days, God, maybe we can get somebody in here. and You can do something. Lord, we can't do anything, but we know you can. And through your word, Lord, maybe somebody get saved, somebody get right, somebody get back in. And we'll thank you for it, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Thank you.